period. These these are these terms are not negotiable. That's why I say it's not a negotiation. Either you meet them or we move on. Have a good day. Yeah. Well, I'm, glad, yeah. I'm glad. Bro, I got the utmost respect for you for saying that. Thank you. <laughs> and Cas, yeah. I'm I'm glad that you explained why you call it trolling because I thought you just wouldn't accept accepting how stupid these women choose to be. You know, what I'm <laughs> so I'm glad you explained it. But uh, now now I, what I'm gonna say is that see at the end of the day, women can do whatever they want. Okay, they can they can want whatever they want. I have no issue with a woman wanting what whatever she wants. But to see the thing is, men have to remember we have choice. A lot of us talk like we have to operate based on what yeah. some woman wants. If you want a man who makes six figures, I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying I can't afford you. And, I, and I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that because you because I need to make about 10 figures a year to afford a woman who makes six figures. You see what I'm Roger, saying? Roger, Roger, I, I don't know. I don't know any man that makes six figures and let his wife just keep his check like that, her check like that. Like just wildly spent. I don't know. I don't know no man. Bro, they delusional. They, they delusional. delusional man. I don't know. I, I, I'm saying if a dude's making six figure and this chick working, it, either her check is just being saved. Like I don't see. I don't know any dude that six figure and his wife works that she's out here spending money like that. That's well, just not. How, well, if you go look at the, uh, if you go look at, uh, yeah, well, if you go I'm, look at the, 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 how far they live. What, what I'm saying is the fact that she requires a six figure man. Yeah, that's true. I make at least eight figures a year. I can't see her. That's what I'm saying. So uh, the marriage ain't even on the table because I, I got to make eight figures a year consistently to, to even think about a woman who requires a man that makes that, that uh, wants six figures a year because you have to be able to afford what you take on. And my thing is, I'm not going to make my decision based on what women want. I'm going to make my decision based on what I want. And I got to do what's comfortable for me. I'm not comfortable with no woman who requires six figures unless I'm making at least 10 million a year. I, I yeah. can't. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong for other men to to want a woman who requires that amount of money, and you don't make ten figures a year. But for me to know I can consistently keep up in this particular situation, and I can enjoy myself as a man, because I got to enjoy my life too. So for me to be able to enjoy things and understand she's gonna want more and more over time, because that's just natural human behavior. I need to be comfortably ahead of what she requires. So if you require six figures. I probably need to be making 10, 10 million a year. I, yeah, I, but, I don't think yeah. that. Yeah, but, it, you also, it, but you also have to look at it too from this perspective. If you go look at that, uh, that retirement strategy called FIRE, it's an acronym, but I, I don't know what the acronym means right now. But if you go look at that and you go look at them couples who do it, they got another couple here. They're a black couple. Um, he black, I think his wife's biracial. Um, they got a pretty good YouTube channel. Um, but um, that's what they do. Like they're not out here spending money. I, I keep telling brothers all the time, Black women view marriage like a father-daughter relationship, meaning I love my daughter, and she probably could do damn near almost anything, and I'm not going to disown her and get rid of her, right? That's what black women want. That's not what marriage is. That's a daddy-daughter relationship, and most daddies just hand their daughter money and don't yeah, think twice about it, exactly. right? That's yeah. what black black women want. That's not marriage, man. That's, nope. that's, a, that's not like you like Roger speaking to. We've been operating on a, a ter, uh, we've well, been well, entertaining and quick, giving quarter to this shit. Let, let okay. me say this real quick and then I'm gonna give you the flow because GT Entertainment is saying something in the chat. I'm gonna still leave this comment up because I want to address this comment. But G, GT Entertainment says, But Roger, that's making a decision based on what she wants. And, and GT, I'm not making a decision based on what she wants. I said, I ain't even looking at a woman. Who requires six figures uh, a year unless i'm making probably about eight figures a year now i've already said if i'm making six figures a year i i can't even tell you i'm gonna get married to do anything like that because i don't even know what, what the point is of getting a woman <laughs> i don't know the point of getting a woman once i'm making six figures a year i don't know the point but well, that's well, what well, like, like you said well, before well, well, the real question is roger what, what what black ados woman needs six figures to survive well, no, no, but but see, for me, my thing is that's not something I need to question. The thing is, if if I if I wasn't valuable to them before I made six figures, why would I invite them into a lifestyle of eight? You get what I'm saying? I, yeah. I don't, you sure? you sure? <laughs> if you if you require six figures out of me, I don't think you value me. Period. So therefore, you're not going to get an invitation. You see what I'm saying? So. If separately, you may think there's something conflict conflicting there. There's no conflict. 
If I make six figures, which I, I don't get, but I'm working toward it. And if I make it, I don't even know what to tell y'all I'm going to do because I don't even know what the, what her purpose is if I'm already making six figures because these women didn't see me until I made that amount of money, which means why should I see them? I don't get the point in them. Well, that's well, that's the point. Here's the point, like for me and my girl, right? Like I told her, like I'm up there making six figures. She make damn near good money. She probably will beat me next year because she, she she's an ICU nurse, right? But the whole goal is, is I want that entire check to boost my family you follow me that that at the end of the day it's supposed to be about your acceleration a she's supposed to support you to make you better i'm not talking about to make you better like your mom i'm not and and if somebody like roger is already a 90 percent nigga i don't you only coming in with 10 percent. my requirement is that picture because at the end of the day if i do it like i tell my girl i'm 39 right I'm finna hit the money that I really want to hit at 45. But me and my girl together, we'll hit it at 40. I'll hit it at 42. To me, in my mind, I'm going, I just want to hit it sooner than 45. But I don't need you because st I'm still going to hit it at 45. That's yeah. how I look at it. You see what I'm saying? And that's how I tell brothers, you should look at it. Uh, even BGS, he's the one that helped me convince me of uh, possibly getting married again and stuff like that. She got to have a purpose, bro. And I'm talking about a significant, impactful purpose to accelerate you on your life. If she not doing that, bro, and if you not can't, if you can't, and if she's not abiding by the angry man standard in terms of handing over that paycheck, sweetheart, you're not, this, these are not negotiations. These are my terms. And either you want to be a part of this, quote unquote, building peace, or it yeah. is what it is. That, that, this is why I say all the time, other groups of women, they'll always make this comment, well, y'all's divorce rate against white women is high. Very true, but it ain't high with Asian women and it ain't high with Hispanic women. Y'all better cut that shit out. I see brothers get with Hispanic women and just take the fuck off. It's ridiculous to me to just have somebody on board going, cool, I'm going to follow your leadership. It's just money and everything you do anyways is for the family. Exactly. Cool. That's what you mind if I hop in on that? Go ahead, bro. Uh, I'll hop in after you. Go ahead. No, yeah, that's the point of that's supposed to be the point of all this is building ourselves and building our families and building have men's whole point of all of this is to build strong foundations and environments for ourselves and our families we don't that's not what our women are taught to do and we i've also been taught to give quarter and entertain a lot of this weird shit where it's even about me purchasing or qualifying in the moment i meet you for a partner in building a family and life like if you're that's just the that's the crux of it the women are not operating from um from their person from them personally are not operating from the point of view of that they want to build a family and build a life they want to just be in a fucking luxury life like like a reality star literally so once you understand that these these commandments that we're starting to codify on the shows like like this one like that like you said a woman it, first first question should be do you want do you want me to be your leader and that and with and then what i mean by leader is financial your financial leader also and if you're not you're not trying to build a family with me and that's just, that's as simple as that i don't even have to care at that point it shouldn't even be about how much money i got right now necessarily that should qualify me for for us partnering that should just be a that's commandment one like no that's not how the dynamics of a relationship or a family is built that's why uneducated Ill illiterate mexicans can come over here and build lives together men illiterate men can come over here and build a life with a wife and a family that's why that works because they're not operating from that from that weird backwards plantation as observing mis misobserving and perceiving what we think white people are doing that's how our women are operating that's facts, that's facts. plain and simple they're operating from false yeah, premises one, from one, 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 slave comment on the interracial, one comment on the interracial uh, marriage phenomenon sometimes um uh, black women will uh, cite the <clears throat> divorce rate of uh, black women with the uh, women of other races in um uh, academia there's uh, the concept of what it's called the mechanistic study and when <clears throat> although uh the divorce rate between black men and other races of women is strictly speaking correct 
Um, the issue is many of these black men are coming from uh, single mother households, and many of them don't have the the <clears throat> the kind of income that other men uh, that other men have. So the fact that um, their divorce rates aren't that much higher than you see with white men and these um, and women of these other races, even though white men have the status, even though white men are uh, coming from two parent homes, even though white men are empowered to make more money than black men, um, you, you got to take that into account when interpreting those statistics. So sometimes black women will lie with that statistic. So the statistic, the statistic has to be analyzed in context. All right, you know, now, I just want to that, uh, and I want to this. Well, well, I got to let Black Crew first. Y'all both just came up, so I'm gonna let him go. Then I'm gonna let you go. But I want to say this first. Uh, I'm not. I'm. I don't concern myself a whole lot with how much a woman makes. Now I will tell y'all that um, a woman who, if I meet a woman who makes more than me, I I never been with one who made more than me. But if, if I meet one who actually makes more than me, I don't have an issue with that. But see. I don't even recommend men do that on a regular level because from what I can tell, the, if, a, if a woman makes more than a man, she does not treat the man with, with respect. Now, I'm not going to tell nobody to give up their dignity. I'd rather you work and, and keep your dignity than deal with a woman who won't respect you. You know what I'm saying? So in the black community, it doesn't seem like it's a beneficial thing to work with a woman who makes more than you. Black women don't seem to be able to handle that. Now, if you get somebody who, who's outside of the black community, you may not run into that problem, but in the black community, black women as a collective have clearly shown me that they cannot handle dealing with a man that makes less than them. So I'm not going to say set yourself up for failure. But when it comes to the money issue, my thing is I, the reason I don't really concern myself with how much a woman makes is because if you're going to work outside the home, it's to help me. If the woman doesn't want to help me, she doesn't want to turn the money over, which means what? She is there to take from me. She is not there to be with me. She is not there to put my kids in a better future situation when we have them. She is not there to be a benefit to my life. It's a clear objective she has. Her objective is to take from me until he finds until she finds another man to take from. That's what her objective is. And I just look at stuff how it is. Why else would she not want to turn money over to me and she wants to live with me? Period. You either come in to benefit or you come in to take. That's facts. It's, it's one of the two. So I, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to complicate the issue. I'm not looking for you to take from me just so you can find a, a better man to take from later on down the road and my pockets get drained during this process. I wouldn't mind being broke for my woman, but she got to be mine. If, but if Roger, I got to endure that, she got to be mine. Roger, what, what's the, who's the dude that's on power? Man, I, I ain't seen power. The main the character time. that passed away the, in the in the show, he didn't die oh, in real um, life. Ghost? You talking about ghost? Yeah, ghost? yeah, ghost. Yeah, what's his name? Uh, um, Omori. Isn't yeah, it? him. Omori, uh, go look at go look at what his wife did. Now his wife is a white woman. She's not that attractive. But if you if you ain't doing that, I ain't marrying you. That's a fact. If you ain't doing that, I don't care what color you are. If you ain't doing what she did, I'm not marrying you. What she do, my brother? She bankrolled his career. That's why the fucking that. That's why he will always respect and honor her. That's why when he go out, women will try to take pictures with him, and he'll be like, "Hey, this is my wife as well." And then they'll be like, "Okay, whatever." And then he'll be like, "Cool, I'm not taking a picture with you. You're gonna acknowledge the woman who helped put me on the map because because she bankrolled him." There's yes, a good energy. Right. She'll hear what he talks about. How he talks about. She's not an attractive woman. She about a five, maybe a four, compared to him. For real, for real. Right, but I'm just yeah, saying I, she, she bankrolled that man. She, in his she's dream. A, yeah, uh, yeah. Is she, is she not looking at you as an investment? No, you're not getting married, bro. That, that's not that's, that's period. Now, now let me address this comment and get a mic to Black Rule and then give it to G. Uh, um, <laughs> build, build, builder of truth. Okay, builder of truth asks when women <laughs> when a woman pays. When a woman pays you, does that mean she's likely to divorce you? Honestly, builder, builder of truth, the answer is actually no. Women who are invested in their men are more actually likely to stay with their men. Women who are not invested in their men do not care about separation as much. And a lot of them actually plan to separate later on down the road anyway. They just want to extract resources from the man first until they're in a comfortable enough position for them to leave. 
But see, if, if your finances are more entangled because she actually wants you to be successful, usually that means that's usually it means she actually wants to stay. And, you know? and here's the other here's the other part to it. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, Roger, he said, when a woman pays, I'm married to you. You're not paying me. You're not paying me to do anything. I'm your husband. Either you invest into me, you're giving. It's one of those two things. But you're not paying me. It's not a. It's it's a it's a crazy thought to think that I'm taking from you on income that you earn, but the income I earn, I spend on my entire family. It, it's it's a mind. You know what I'm saying? Just the audacity and, and, and lunacy of it all. You know what I mean? Well, I, w- I was going to touch that part, too. And, and I was going to say what we have to do is respect the fact that, no, the woman is not paying you. The woman is actually paying to be in a better situation. If you're going to look at it as paying, she's paying to be in a better situation than she would be by herself. If you're going to address it as pain, I'm not worried about no woman paying. You know what I'm saying? If if, if let's let's say the woman makes 30,000 a year and you make 35,000 a year. And you can and you call it pain. Well, she's paying to live in a sixty-five thousand dollar year lifestyle. That's what she's doing. She just she just doubled her situation based on the man that she's dealing with. So even if she's gonna take it, and I'm not I'm not even worried about you using the word pay because I'm pretty sure you're gonna have arguments with women. That's how they gonna present it to you. So even if they take it as she's paying, she's paying to be in a better situation. Plain and simple, she wins regardless. OK, the thing is, is you as a man, you need to make sure you win, too. That's all. Now, if she's only extracting and keep in mind, the reason most black women work is so they don't have to listen to a man. That's the reason they got the jobs in the first place. Mm-hmm. They see it all the time. Yeah. You know, that's what the goal is. So they don't have to listen. Well, why would you allow a woman like that to take from you until she can move on to something better? That's but right. let me give the to, uh, to, uh, to the elder. Go ahead, Black Uru. Hey, Roger. Thanks for having me up. Uh, enjoying the conversation, you gentlemen. Uh, I, I may say some things I, I haven't had the chance to listen to the whole discussion. So I may touch on some issues that you all have, have already covered or whatever uh, of that sort. Um, you know, I I well, listen, you know, I obviously. Real, let me just say this real quick. And y'all, we're going to give G the mic next. So, so as much as you may want to jump in, let's make sure we give G the mic next. Yeah. All right. You got you got it, Black Aru. Yeah, you know, I, I watched the video that inspired um the um this uh discussion uh and I think I saw something else where apparently the the young couple has received a lot of negative uh commentary uh and, and probably have not dealt with that that very well. You know I, in a in a in a prior world, you know, I, I would wholly support, you know, what's being presented uh, in terms of the man assuming control over a woman's uh, assets and, and resources. Uh, that probably in most cases was a wise thing to do, uh, you know, generations ago. I, you know, I, I'm so suspicious of the behavior of women. And 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 how the current legal and judicial system is, the media, government, that I think this is a risky thing for men to do, especially if you're not married to the women. I, I could well, this is what I foresee potentially happening. So you're taking her money, you know, now she supposedly is voluntarily tendering it over to you. Well, we know that how easy it is to for to convince a court or government or whatever that you know a man has somehow coerced a a woman into doing something i mean we know how easy that is for a crying billowing woman to do (laughs) so i so i'm just i'm suspicious i mean let's take this situation here okay they're not married which is an is a big issue in and of itself because in a marriage, whatever happens in that marriage, unless there's some prenuptial agreement to the contrary or whatever, that's shared, full shared marital asset. So, you know, even the claim over what the man has or what the woman has, they supposedly share 
in, in sort of a community way all the benefits of, of what they bring into that relationship. Here you, you have a situation where people aren't married. And so if you're taking her property, essentially, you know, in, in a liquid form, then there's the question of the commingling of your resources with her resources. If there are any investments or any other properties that could be somewhat dynamic in terms of the change in their potential market value, liquidity, you know, when the relationship breaks down, then now there's a question of who has claim to what, who owns what. And, and when you combine that with, with the potential claim of, of the woman to see, to, to assert that she has been coerced into something, I, I can see potential calamity associated with this for, for a young man, especially, I would say at the very least, if you're going to do this kind of arrangement, definitely get it in writing, definitely have it be drafted by an attorney, and, and ideally even have her have an attorney to attest to, uh, yeah. to review it and attest to the agreement as well before signing off on it, have it notarized or whatever. I know this is incredibly formal, and, and it, obviously it, it will require some investment in money in terms of uh, uh, lawyer fees and and whatever other notification uh, official notification of the agreement. Right. But I would not trust a modern woman to uphold this agreement. I wouldn't. I Black just Earth, wouldn't. Black Earth, do you think do you think they would consider them um, common law if that's this was going down? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you're you're putting yourself in a position where she could potentially make claim to shit that she don't she herself don't even didn't necessarily contribute. Just by commingling her resources with yours, you're potentially giving her claim to all sorts of things. Now, that's one thing if you're married and you've already officially and fully and spiritually committed to all the risks associated with a marriage. But to not be married to a woman and do this in the current legal environment, in the current judicial environment, I wouldn't do it. I'll bet you there's some shit in the violence against women's act or some bullshit like that that covers this very thing. I'll bet you there is. All over economic the state, abuse. all over the country, they are instituting economic abuse statutes all over the fucking country. You better believe when that relationship break down, she gets an attorney or she knows somebody who knows an attorney, I guarantee you he will hear the phrase economic abuse. And he will likely see it cited in a subpoena. So I, I, I would be very cautious about this kind of thing in the current legal, judicial, governmental, media environment that we're in. Very careful. Well, we're going we're gonna to turn it over to G. I'm just going to make a quick statement. Uh, again, as I said earlier, I don't even recommend you live with a woman unless you're married. Period. <laughs> so if it ain't that serious, my recommendation, don't even, don't even live with her and you don't have to worry about co-mingling any fun. But if you're going to take your relationship to that level, to me, that's, that should be required. And if she don't want to do it, that says something about should you really even go forth and take your relationship to the next level? G, you got the flow. Hey, how the brothers feeling today? What's good, bro? Hey, G. Right. Well, bro. Salute. Salute. I've just been listening to the brothers all day, man. And I, I'm just going to say, with this whole situation, I, I don't even believe we should tell women how much money we have or what we make. The more that I'm starting to, you know, I'm getting a little older and dealing with yep. women. I'm just not even telling them how much money I make. There's no reason for them to understand or know how much money I actually bring in, what's in my bank account. There's no reason for them to have access to that or nothing. 100%. If, yeah, if they want to be independent and keep their own money, I let them keep their own money because honestly, I've never really met a woman with a real plan. Right? <laughs> like I've never met a woman with a plan. Like every woman I've ever met, they just kind of going through life, going to work and coming home. And it's like they, you know, they they don't have an actual plan for their money. They're not trying to do nothing or change nothing or build nothing <laughs> so i i don't it's hard to convince somebody who has no plan to get along with the plan 
Like most yeah. women's plans are just going out to eat with their friends, or if they could go on a little trip, in their mind, they're living an extravagant best life because they got to go on a discount boat cruise, or they caught some tickets on Groupon to fly to Barbados. Like that's their best life. You see what I'm saying? That's the stuff that they look forward to. They're not looking for men who are trying to build companies or trying to build organizations or build business concerns or future stuff or endeavors for us to live off of. Most women don't do that. That's why most women, by the time they're like 35, 36, are in debt. They don't got nothing. They just, I don't know, man. So that's why I look at that situation as... Like Roger said, I've never really dealt with a woman that made more money than me. And I'm not a very high earner like that. But it's just the way that they handle money and the way that we handle money is fundamentally different. Damn near every man I know has a goal for his money. He's trying to achieve something. Damn near every woman I know have no goal for their money. <laughs> or they just repeat the goal that they heard from a man. I'm trying to get a house. Like, I'm going to get a house in the, like, well, I'm going to get a business in the house. And you're like, well, what's the business in the house? And then 90% of them, their business is based around selling weave or eyelashes or some shit like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, 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 they're not really business people. They're not doing real business. They're not affecting the business scape. So I don't even tell them how much. I think we should just refrain from even telling them how much money we make. Just don't yeah, even tell them. Right. Gee, I was gee, I was just driving in talking to my girl for I hopped on here, and we was literally just saying the same shit. We were talking about how men literally can live off thirty thousand dollars a year. We don't need a lot of shit. That's just the way we are. Y'all bring the extra burden. Look, man, can all live this, off less. Listen, that's what I know. Man, I'm saying. I said this. I know all brothers, this extra stuff. I know brothers who can make fifty thousand. And got most saved than a nigga making a six figures. Like that's yeah. just how we operate. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I feel you man, on that. I know, dude. I know men. I know men who make. I, I would be. I don't know exactly what they make, but they make over fifty, and they live in studio apartments with futons and playstations. Yep. <laughs> and save all their money and go yep, wherever yep. they want every year. Literally, I know dudes like that who got a book bag with his like camping stuff in it, his cell phone, his electronics. And you go to his house, all he has is a futon, a flat screen TV, and a, and a, and a PlayStation. Let, let me ask you, gentlemen, a, <laughs> let me ask you, gentlemen, a question. If you all aren't filing tax returns together, why the hell does she need to know how much money you make? Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You don't, oh, I don't even tell them. And especially like certain of us who put ourselves in positions to be 1099 filers, or we're filing some type of business return. She doesn't need to be involved in none of that. Yeah, no, I think, I think no, I'm just did. saying if we're not in business together or and or a marriage together in which it's required, the declaration of our, our salary, our earnings is is required for official, you know, governmental reasons. I don't know why you have to ever tell a woman how much money you earn. Well, no, well, well let me just say that until G just said that none of us even brought that up. I hadn't even thought about telling yeah. a woman how I, I don't know. Yeah, I, it ain't never came up in my life to tell a woman exactly how much I make. It just ain't yeah. never came up. Man, I, that I, think ain't ever I think that's commandment two for the day. After if 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 leadership is not what she's looking for, then she's not even uh she doesn't meet the requirement. For, that's, especially that's fact. As long as all Command the bills get as long as all the bills get paid, don't talk to me. Yeah, and commandment two, like G just codified for us, is why the fuck are we even why are we uh declaring our 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 net worth and shit to women that ask like for all these even this high value shit like why are we even like giving that information up what's the what's the utility out of that outside of just fucking accommodating gynocratic bullshit that's I can, tell you, I can tell you why it's been going on six decades of their mis their misandry the gynocracy and them Deprogramming men into doing what they want. That's why it's going on. But like you said, commandment number two, that shit must stop today. Yeah, that's not even that's a discussion that's need to be had. That's not even that goes into that damn near makes all this other this shit we talking about as far as uh establishing this deal with the women woman 
that that shouldn't even be part of the conversation that oh, yeah i i got a hundred thousand dollars you know you know i make a hundred thousand dollars right like that shouldn't even be part of how we court or establish whether or not we compatible clearly well well my thing is it doesn't it doesn't need to be brought up the the thing is a woman sees what your lifestyle is based on you showing it to her so she gonna she gonna ride in the car you allow her to ride in just that simple at the end yeah, of the day. If she got a problem thing, with that bro. vehicle, she don't need to ride no car. That's she gonna come to the house, you show her. If she got a yeah. problem with where you live, she don't need to come. Yeah. You, you but that's look. the thing, Raj. Most women don't understand the difference between 70000 and 100000 Nope. You can make 70000 and just tell her you make a hundred, and she gonna think that. Because most women make like $25,000 or $30,000. Like they don't, I don't, I, I don't know very many Seventy thousand to eighty thousand dollar earning women, except nurses. Like I don't yeah. know a bunch of women that make eighty thousand dollars running around. I don't. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying. Look, this is one thing that I do. It got to be part of your budget. I didn't say y'all's budget. I said your budget. Like for me and my girl, right? We pretty much date a, in in a six month time span a lot. The other six months we don't. So when she starts complaining, oh, we haven't had a date now in a while. Well, when that window come open. That's when we're going to date. I take you everywhere you want to go. Do what you want to do, right? Well, yeah, I just kind of wish it ain't changing. I'm with G on this. You, you don't need to know what I'm doing. You get the things that you ask for, things paid for. I take you out and do date night and do nice things for you. What yeah. you want, if I, you, what you want me to do is give you an inch so you can take a mile. And I'm not doing that. In terms of the commandments oh, we're establishing, oh, you think it, you think, you're thinking above pay grade. You do not need to know my finances or as if you accept my leadership, you accept my financial leadership. That's the, you're thinking above pay grade at that point. If you start, if it's any discussion about essentially how much money I'm bringing to the situation and how it's being distributed. Uh, again, it don't have to be shrouded in mystery. She can have access to the financial records and all that. But the point is that leadership you accepting from commandment one is baked in that the finances I'm managing and I'm hierarchically above you. So you're thinking above pay grade. We don't pay you to think well, about how much money I'm bringing. Well, what, that's what? the thing, compassionate. When you when they know that when they know that you make exponentially more money than them, it causes them stress. I swear, as soon as every black woman I met that found out, like this nigga make four or five times as much yeah. money as me. That shit stresses them out because they it know does. they have, it they does. know that you have the ability that they, I've heard them to tell leave. them, like, nigga, you could just leave and it, and it won't fuck with you and it'll fuck my whole life up. Like, that don't got, like, that's just how much money I make. But to them, that matters. That's such a dangerous thing to them that this nigga could just walk away. He's not going to be hurt. He's not going to be homeless. He's not going to be no. harmless. He's not going to be moneyless. They want, no, you to win. they want you to not be able to walk away from them. With I shit. think that you hitting it right on the head with the foundation of them, for one, trying to, uh, first of all, uh, they are culturating our girls or the, the, the gynocracy is acculturating the girls to be able to provide for themselves so they don't have to, the, a man doesn't have the leverage financially over them. And then furthermore, they they want to set it up that black men inherently don't really have the leverage financially well, above what them. it is is we we've always had the leverage we are just nice men like yeah the brothers is like new black dudes we're just nice men we're fair men we're not brutal we're not hierarchical like that we're not patriarchal tyrants so even though we did make money we always indulged our women and that we've bit us in the ass let, yeah we've always let them do what they want to dress how they want to We've always indulged that. Clearly, there's a reason why oh, patriarchal yeah. t tyranny exists. Because exactly. a nice guy hurt. gets his ass bit. Yeah, well, well, I, I don't have a problem with a person being nice. My thing is you just got to put the roof is on top of it. And, yeah. uh, you know, yep. when, it, when it, I've never actually thought of the concept of telling a woman how much I make. Because I don't know why she needed to know. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's bad if a man tells. If you decide to tell your woman how much you make, that's your business at the end of the day. You, you your own man. For me, I'm, it's I'm, I'm, I'm with you right there. My mama worked majority of my life, <laughs> and my, my mom and got my mom and daddy both got a nice house, right? Mama, I don't think my mama know how much my daddy made, but she paid, but she put her paycheck in his bank account. <laughs> she don't ask no question. Right. She's like, as long as everything taken care of, when I get my little, 
her and my um her and my aunt you know they sit they go to little concerts like earth wind and fire and you know little trips like that as long as she get to do that she don't even care she's like hey our shit's taken care of i'm happy she said i did my job i raised my kids right i got me a job i want to go to a little mm-hmm. concert with my sister he's like bye and no <laughs> roger like, if you want if you want to consider yourself about- a patriarchal black man commandment you should if you're a divulging to a women in courting phases and you that how much money you make you're not you're not practicing black patriarchal standards you're not hey roger what the good the good books say don't let the left hand know what the right hand doing <laughs> and my, my point is i'm providing you a certain lifestyle you either like it or you don't because because what if i'm making millions of dollars a year but i'm not putting this putting this in a a multi-million dollar lifestyle i'm providing a certain lifestyle you either want the lifestyle that i'm willing to give or you don't want the lifestyle that I'm willing to give. How much money I make don't necessarily determine that. How yeah. much money I make says what I can do. It's not gonna necessarily mean what I'm gonna do. Cause if you know if, if I'm making millions a year, I'm still only gonna do so much. You know what I'm saying? A- a- unless I'm famous, I don't need to live in no eight million dollar mansion. I don't know a point in it. I just yeah. don't. You know what I'm saying? And, and look, I'm not look, Roger. nobody who wants to live in an eight, eight, uh, uh, eight million dollar mansion. That's you. I don't have a point in living in one unless I got a bunch of kids around or a bunch of family members around. I don't have a point to live in an eight million dollar mansion. I just don't. Yeah, look, Roger, look, look here. I knew a dude, my brother, good friend back in uh, high school, college, right? This his, this dude's daddy built apartments. So they lived in a mansion. Do I tell you they had nice stuff? But do, I'm talking about, but they had old nice stuff. They ain't going nowhere. They didn't party. His wife won no party. They they he provided a lifestyle, and she was cool with it. Now, granted, they was rich, but she ain't pushed that man for nothing else. I'm talking about sixty million sitting in the bank, just sitting there. You yeah, follow? They- they, they just they, she she comfortable in the lifestyle that that man provides. She not asking that man, but she you know she got with him when he ain't had shit though. But, but you get what I'm saying? Other women practice they they looking for financial security. Our women are looking for financial surplus. They think that's what wealth is to have more weight to do with and purchase more than you could ever need or ever really want. They do, other other real life communities that have had to struggle through nature and develop their culture through pragmatic survival want security. We got some plantation shit going on where women, these women been watching Miss Anne for centuries and wanting this financial surplus at 1%. Uh, what it is compared well, well, to- Well, let me say this real is. quick. Well, you know, you know, let me say this real quick. I don't care what women want, which I've said before. Cause you're not paying for it. You want me to pay for it. You want me to provide it. It's not my. It's not my job to care what you want. You have to actually like what I'm doing. Cause you're not gonna provide. The the person who's gonna pay for it, that's the person who needs to be concerned with how the lifestyle is gonna be. Now, hey. and that's why if she wants to join the lifestyle you already have established, you can come in, but you gotta turn the money over. Look here. The lifestyle hey. was established before you showed up. In fact, Roger, put up uh, Ryo's last eight priest's statement. That that right that right there, gentlemen, is the main. This is probably one of the fundamental downfalls of black men. How are you paying for this protection? That's how mm-hmm. I did my girl. How are you paying for this? Mm-hmm. And I don't want, and I don't want no love, and I don't want no peace league. How are you paying for this? Because at the end of the day, this is an exchange. This is this is my life. The first day she Yeah, this is my life. My life is important. So I got kids, she got kids, right? So I said, now if we out in public and something happened, I gotta risk my life for your child. How you paying for that? And she just looked at me, she said, What you mean? I said, only thing you're gonna be able to do is tell my children, send them a card on the holidays check up on them on facebook and say your daddy was a good man that ain't <laughs> fucking benefit me in no kind of way how you paying for my protection and you see this these things and what you just uh spoke on live bro is fundamentally survival and goes without saying is a, it is a understood 
Facts. In, like in mathematics. Should it's an understood. Should it should. should. That's why I'm 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 keeping I'm I'm going back to the root of this. Cause I think as as men, especially we logical and we we try to fit we trying to figure out some logic to what their motivations and thought process is. These Eidos women were not acculturated in a natural circumstance where survival and these understoods were cultivated over centuries. They were in an artificial environment with a bunch of false premises. I disagree. I disagree with you. I disagree. Okay, go ahead. Why? I believe that they know they know what the fuck they're doing, man. Oh, I ain't say they didn't know. We, we all we all had it's not logical. Listen, we all had grandparents. My grandparents will be in their nineties right now. And my grandpa, my grandfather was not going for the fucking. It's something that happened in our mother in the 80s, and the, the people that was born from like 1966 <laughs> to 1970-something, that generation really bred this shit. I don't know what no, generation No, I think it goes further, is. bro. No, I, that... I'm saying this. It does in, in, in micro in microaggressions, but it's never been like this, bro. Yeah, what he, what he's because saying, what G, what G is saying, what G is saying, no, what G is saying is true. What he's saying, I remember what he's saying up. is this. What he's saying is this. The Gen Xers were fucked with, and they were. They were the first experimental group. Yeah, like I no, remember. They were really I remember, fucked with. Y'all I remember speaking. my grandparents. This is this is this is. Let me just get this out, bro. I'm go not. Ahead, go ahead. I'm not disagreeing with you totally. What I'm saying is, I remember every woman know. That's why you hear these women that refer back to their grandfathers and their father. Like certain women, it's their father. Like my daddy was a man and he did this and my mama fell in line. Or, you know, I remember that shit with my grandpa. My grandpa had kids by four different women. You're right, right. My, my grandma never stepped out of line with him. You, and my uncles had kids. My great uncles, my mother uncles. I got an uncle named Eddie Miles. My uncle Eddie Miles had kids all across the north side of town. And we didn't really find out about it till he died. And it was like nobody talked crazy about him. Let, it wasn't no hey, shit hey, ass. Let me ask, let me ask, G, let me ask, let me ask you this. G. Hold on, G. Um, with, with all due respect, and this is a benefit of getting old. You know, one of the things you discover the older you get is how ignorant you were of the business of older people. Very often as, as young people, especially as children, we get a limited view of what was really going on, especially when, when you get back to the grandparent and the great grandparent generation. You know, usually you get to a certain age where uh, if you still have a few older relatives around, they start really telling you like, I, as of late, <laughs> I have learned things about my mother and my father that I did not know about at all. And it's only because my mother and father are gone. Uh, most of their peers are, are gone. And there are a few of them left. Uh, my my grandpa, my, uh, my mother has a, a brother and sister who are still here. My father has two sisters who are still here. They are telling me truths about things that I have not known the whole 60 years prior. Mm -hmm. Things that have shocked me. I did not know until just recently who my mother's father was. If my 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 mother's sister or half sister just somewhat guiltily told me about who this man is and the circumstances in which my mother was born. The point I'm making is is that I'd be careful about my recollections of what people did who were much older than I was. Because Black people in particular, and this is something I've discovered, especially in prior generations, we have a nasty or have had a nasty habit of hiding certain mm -hmm. things, certain embarrassing things about right. ourselves, right. 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 about things we've done and who we've done them with. And who really is your Uncle James' father? Because yeah, you thought yeah, he bro. looked like your granddad. And that's what nah, I was doing. He actually too. looked more like the dude down the street. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's what I was getting to. look alike. And that's oh, what G I was getting to. G, let me, about 
how you wax rhapsodically about the, what yeah. went on between your grandparents no. and great grandparents. Well, no, I was saying that to make a reference that this is a choice. This is not no training. It's a choice how they be, choose to behave. They know the right thing to do, man. They know. Let me qualify. Let me me qualify what I was saying because I think you. you, Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Look, look. Like the timeline is far. Why I say this is this is a deeper. This this stretches deeper and past. This is a historic. This goes all the way back to the plantation. From the PhDs in this space, I've learned and and understood this dynamic. That blip that millennials like. I think you're a millennial, or maybe just out of millennials. No, I'm we, a millennial. I'm right. A millennial. That yeah. that little blip in the so called fifties and with, with our grandparents, that's that so called patriarchal control sometimes we thought we observed with our grandfathers was a was a, a function of the great migration, us moving into this the our grandmothers and great grandmothers were from the deep south most likely. And in like I've learned from the PhDs in this space, in those agrarian agriculture type rural settings. This gynocratic shit that we've always had couldn't sprout to the level it did by the time we all migrated towards cities. And at this point, what we're seeing now, it's not necessarily a choice. This is a mutation of the gynocratic shit we've had instilled in our women from the plantation. And it, and it gets to flourish now. It's not like the, the Generation X and the millennial women are choosing it necessarily consciously. This is just a remnant of what was already ingrained and passed down even through past through the generations we perceive that have some type of patriarchal control well, they I really mean, didn't i get hold, hold on g i got you listen hold on i got you listen i get what you're saying but what g's but what g's trying to say is what kevin be saying once you hit 18 i ain't talking about 18 for late gen, but boomers the reason why i got such mercy for boomers and give them grace and mercy for boomers in that silent generation. They ain't had no fucking internet. The reason why I can have grace and mercy for Gen Xers, they ain't had no fucking internet. But I'm with G. They got the internet. Just like we wanted to go find the truth, they can go find the truth. I don't care what you was, your upbringing was. Period. But most of us ain't found the truth, bro. But, that, hold on, but, that's, but that, what I'm saying to you is this. If you stand before your maker, from as a modern woman that's the question god gonna ask you that ain't my fault you didn't want to go seek no truth in proverbs that's what the book of proverbs says that's what god gonna say i gave you the whole goddamn book oh no i'm not and getting, all I'm you're not, getting you're right. and all you're getting get some understanding accountability is definitely i'm not withholding accountability from the modern women i'm not saying that i'm saying where well, we have to frame this and look at it and try to understand this cause and effect and how we how I'm, we can, I'm, here's a here's a difference though bro i'm, I'm gonna be flat honest with you so what if you're an alcoholic and you got this deep-seated trauma you got to stop drinking i don't care what your problems are you gonna have to stop drinking you got to stop drinking first before we can even get to any of that mess and that's what g is saying y'all got to stop this uh this fuckery so we can even y'all not even trying to if they want to address it here's the thing they want to address the deep-seated issues why they keep drinking and you can't do that you're gonna stop this drinking first and then we're going to go deal with these issues. And like they see on Kevin's show, oh, I just signed up for therapy. Kevin been running for two years. I don't hear that bull crap. And it don't cost that much to go talk to somebody. And that's the yeah. thing. <laughs> let, me say, let, me, let, me say this. let me say this to y'all. Let, let me say this. Uh, we're not going to mention other content creators that don't come over here. Yeah, my bad. My apology. Yeah, yeah, Even yeah. Kevin. Uh, unless, except the uh, Dennis Perlin and, and the legal attorney because they're attorneys. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's kind of important. And then the PhDs. Everybody okay. else got to be somebody who actually frequents over here. Okay. okay. Um, now, I, uh, I want to say, uh, you know, uh, uh, also the great see. Dr. Tiazan Johnson has visited. Yeah, time. he has. He, he absolutely yeah. has. <laughs> but yeah. uh, in, any other, any other, uh, the other PhDs, I got, I have a certain level of respect for the fuck. Oh, yeah. Anything going on with the PhDs. And this is what I'm saying, Roger. I just want to like, as men, it's our responsibility to set the boundary. That's mm-hmm. why I say we are just nice guys. And I don't think our women appreciate how nice of men we are until they go to these, like most of these women who do the so-called swirl thing, they come back running with their tail between their legs. 
You know what I'm saying? Then they all of a sudden they're pro black hotep. The black woman is God bullshit after they went and fucked on the white boy. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, but, here's, but here's the other part of it too, right? Here's the other no, part no, let of me it finish, Let me finish. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me I'm finish. Sorry. So as men, it's been I'm not going to say it's our fault. It's definitely our responsibility for how we let them treat us. Me, I hold oh, no. a staunch, I hold a staunch bitch, I will leave. Like I will walk away and you could go ahead and find somebody who could please all your nagging and complaining and all that. If I'm giving you a good life and I know I'm fulfilling my responsibilities as a man, I'm not about to sit up there and listen to no woman fucking nag me to death. I'll just leave and go find a new woman. Well, I think the the, the issue that we have is black men. And that's why I keep saying it the way I say it. We care about what women want who ain't even attached to us. I don't care what no woman who's not attached to me wants. You yeah. have to be my woman, then I care about what you want. And I'm only going to care so much. If I can give it to you, I give it to you. If I decide I can't give it to you or it's a bad move for me to give it to you, I'm not giving it to you. It's, it's that simple. You see what I'm saying? You, yeah. may want, you may want a Mercedes. Maybe I can't get you a Mercedes. Maybe I can only get you a Chevy. Well, guess you what? You're going to take the Chevy. That goes in. grateful that I gave it to you. That goes into black men having a problem. Our fundamental issue is what we're trying to uh, overcome in this space is our lack of ability to diagnose this dysfunction within our community and our 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 women because we keep running in brick walls expecting certain shit to be uh, appreciated oh. and a certain shit to be uh, accommodated and how, how people how a woman should function and we're oh. we're operating with false premises that we're dealing with normal uh acculturated women that would be reasonable financially be reasonable as far as the exchange of your your masculine but, energy compassion, compassion let me ask you a question how are you i'm 31. Okay, so that's 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 the issue. The issue, I agree with you what you're saying, and that we we'll agree exactly what you're saying. But that's like men above 35 and up. We got that problem. <laughs> these 30, these 35 and below your generation, y'all ain't got that problem. They not finna fix nothing. If you ain't gonna go get fixed, they not they, black. I always tell the younger dudes, if you really want to know what it is to date out, I'm not really date out. If you really want to know the truth, go date a black woman. And once you don't bang your head up against the wall, black women are the best teachers not to deal with them. That's just the truth. And then you can see that by the young boys in school who were dating out at the rapid rate. Well, well, well my thing is that that ain't don't ain't gonna necessarily hold true. The, the way we live is gonna have something to do with the outcome we're gonna have no matter no, who. No, with. no, I agree with that. I'm just talking about in terms of of men. 35 and up, even compassionate with his maturity, is having this conversation with us. But most men 35 and below, really 30 and below, they not having this conversation. No, no, I, no, I, I, dudes I like casual, dudes like casual, there is no negotiation across the board no, with no, these guys. I yeah. get what you're saying on, on that level, but what I'm also saying is that you know men need to understand certain concepts, like this whole thing about turning over your check. You get the one who, who regardless, of, regardless of whatever woman you deal with. You have to understand that this is something you have to live by, period. Because right. you go, you yeah. go out and the race and get, get get with someone else, and she don't do it. You still gonna run into the same problem at the end. Yeah, yeah, you can't be, yeah, you can't be red pill with black women and blue pill against them other groups. No, I'm I'm red pill across the board. Like I tell my girls, she's Hispanic. I I literally went and found top tier Hispanic men, and I researched how they get treated by their women. And I tell my girl, that is how you will treat me, period. Mm. Yeah, and, and, and I, I don't care what group of woman is. She Asian, whatever. Go find how they treat they top tier man. That's how the hell you gonna treat me. Well, that's why I'm saying that we we concern ourselves too much with what women want. You concern mm. yourself with your woman. Your woman mm. may have some particular requests from you as a man. You can consider those requests. But if Facts. she if she ain't your woman, she don't count. You know what I'm saying? So all these women who come out that's that true. Who make six figures, they don't mean nothing to me. They're not my woman. You know what I'm saying? Sure. I don't care what they want. <laughs> and and, and because they want something that I'm not even willing to deal with, they're not going to get me anyway. So they they basically don't exist to me. Well, I, how I honestly feel about it, Raj, is that it's not even important in my life no more, honestly. I'm more concerned with the brothers interacting with each other than I am with us interacting with women. Because the honest truth is the women is going to come where the men are at. Like, that's just what it is. Like, we're not going to have to chase them. We're not going to have to negotiate. After they realize that, okay, these brothers is over here messing with each other, they're doing business, they're going to come wherever we at. 
That's why as the mental sphere grow, it's more and more women that comes into the black mental sphere because they're looking for the brothers. These women could get on here and make all these excuses and all these I'm happy. We know you're not happy being single. We know you're not happy at home alone on New Year's Day or Christmas Day or Valentine's Day or Fourth of July or any of these other holidays that we all celebrate in America. We know you're not happy when you're sitting there in the middle of the night and you know that you got some random dude that's just about to come over. You know this nigga don't care about you. He don't want to get you. He don't want to make sure you straight tomorrow. If you're going to eat, all he's coming over for is that box. And all of them can say that they feel okay with that, but we know deep down we don't feel okay with shit like that. You know what I'm saying? We already know how we get as men in our emotions. And imagine a female's emotions is even more radical than yours, and you really believe the lies that are coming out of their mouth. Like, man, this is a lot of stuff we're dealing with. It's pride. It's bravado. It's them just talking, and when you get in their face, they submit. I know from experience. I ain't gonna speak on experience too much. I done mess with these women on the internet that swore they don't need a man. And then, man, I got to that house, nigga. I had a plate with gravy on it. <laughs> okay, let me say, Raya, I see you and I got you, brother. I see you and I got you. I'm about to do it now. But what I'm saying is, uh, in the context of this conversation, what women want shouldn't even be on the table. Who cares? You know what I'm saying? A man is going to provide a certain lifestyle. If she wants to participate in the lifestyle the man provides, then it's her job to say, I'm willing to be with you and I'm willing to do what it takes. And part of that is turning that check over. If if I'm going to be with a woman and I cannot have sex because she's tired from working, if I got to help the kids learn something more, I got to tutor them because she's tired from working. If I got to put in loads of laundry because she's tired from working, if I got to uh, you know, cook here and there, because she tired from working, you got to financially compensate me for, for my wife being tired because she's helping some other man live a better lifestyle. Why would I not want money because of that? Period. So my thing is like this, this thought process has to be established already. You know what I'm saying? What she wants ain't really my issue. The woman has to understand this to even be in that close. You can't live with me unless you accept this type of stuff and agree to this type of stuff. Period. You, you don't get to live with me. Now, if you want to run it your way, I'm not saying no woman can't run it their way. You just got to do it on your own. But black men need to take that type of uh, stance on stuff. We can be together separate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You come visit from time to time, but you can't live with me unless you go really to turn that money over. That's got to be where the line is drawn. Well, that's got to be one of the lines that's drawn. You, you don't get to come in unless you're going to come in the way I tell you. You can come in. And if you feel you can do better without me, just do better. I'm not going to concern myself with it. That, that's what I'm trying to get across. And I don't think. Oh, we, no, I, I know what you said, Rod. I know what you That's what I'm telling you, man. It's a lot of this. So we a lot of this stuff. We can't take it at face value because it's not reality, man. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I, I'm seeing it every day. In the real world, like I don't be home much, but every time I come home and I stay home for a couple weeks, it just get me a little break in. Man, this shit, this shit count. Trust me, Roger. The stuff we talking about, brothers know about it. And I'm I'm not speaking on every single dynamic and city, but trust me, these women out here feeling the pain, bro. They feeling the pain of dudes walking out that house, man. Cause yeah. there ain't no there ain't no Christmas without daddy, bro. There ain't no there ain't no fun time when she get done with all them kids and at the end of the night she look around, the kids done had their fun, they playing, and she's sitting around walking around that house just like a man. Ain't no fun when you done worked hard as you could work. You done built all this stuff and now you in this mansion all alone. Nobody wants that. That's not how human beings are cultured. That's not I'm not gonna be a man and just say I'm okay all the time by myself. No, nah, I would want. I like family and friends and all that too. I could just handle it a little better. But could you imagine being thirty-eight years old, thirty-five years old, thirty-nine years old? You know, you just in the house with kids. Everybody left, and then on the nights where you're supposed to be with a companion and see the fruits of your labor of your life, you just sitting around with a damn dog. Bro, <laughs> I, I, I get that, but that's not good enough. Though, if you have to fail 
completely and miserably to say that I'm value, that I have value to you, I don't want you no way. That's you fact. Bro. Have to say it. <laughs> That's okay. fact. No, I, I, I not have to say I feel. I'm saying this. That is hurting them. It's not hurting us. See, that's not hurt. Like most well, men, yeah, most yeah, most men could get a woman. Like most, I, I would. We just gonna keep it a buck. It's not hard to get a woman. Like we, we not she might not be the woman you want or nothing like that. I mean, I, I can't even. Speak nah, on she that. might not be. G, you right. She might not be <laughs> the prettiest, but she. Yeah, <laughs> but it, you can get one. Hard. Yeah, it's not hard to. But now on the on the opposite end, it's. I think it's a little bit more difficult for them to find a man that actually wants to provide, buy them gifts, take care of them, listen to their problems, you know, to be in a relationship. Most most brothers don't want to be in a relationship like that with certain types of women. So well, that's, that's I don't know. I don't that's know. True. No, no, you, that's true. And it's proven by the marriage rates. It's the reason men don't marry women. So you, you're absolutely right on in, in that regard. And I and I think that it's it's uh again that's more of a you know what, what we have to express to women. So as women grow up and they learn different things, we got to say what what our expectations are. We got to say what we require them to bring to the table, and we don't do that enough as men. No nope. girls do not grow up hearing what men want. Girls grow up hearing what some man's supposed to do for them, and that's basically what they're gonna get. They're pretty much a one sided thing. That's My bad. Thing is, you know what I'm saying? We got to change the culture. We gotta you got to. Listen, I just tell my daughter all the time, I'm not no TV dad. And I know that's what you want me to be, but I'm not no TV dad. Men want something in life. They're not these bumbling fools that you see on TV or, 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 or Netflix. That ain't what men are. That's why y'all having a tough time understanding men. Men are not an object. Right? That's not what they are. And if you but if you want to live your life, like I told a, a, a friend of mine this, I said, look, I said, I said, sweetie, I said, look, the good books say if you live by the sword, you must die by the sword, right? So there's a formula there, that's a philosophy there. However, you live your life, that's pretty much how your life gonna be taken. Or it could be taken, right? So if you live your life based on want, then want might not want you back. But if you live your life off of need and other and other other things and characteristics, then you might get that in return. All right. So at the end of the day, a lot of these women, like I said before, want a TV dad or they actually want. Well, here's my thing. Uh, uh, Dennis Sperling just put up a post last night. Talking about uh, this lady commented about how uh, try to put him down for the uh, Dennis Sperling's son learning how to dance. So he was. She, the, boy, the young boy was dancing with the um, the maid's daughter. You know, they just practice him one night. And so the black lady said, "Well, well, well other white men wouldn't want to, wouldn't let their child dance with a, a the maid's daughter." And I responded and said, "Look, we're not trying to be like them. <laughs> Y'all trying to be like them. We trying to be like yeah. us. Out of all the bullshit that everybody know about black men, we've been been talk dog shit about. Why the hell other groups of women still trying to be with us?" I got to tell you something, but I just tell brothers have a backbone. And like Rael said before, how y'all paying for all this? That's that's the only thing I care about. And I'm with Roger on that, man. If you're not on my program, you're not my pro problem. Just you come mess with me. I'm going to mess with you back like a dude. Outside of that, leave me alone. And that's what I said. Black men just aren't used to having us being freedom. A standard we ain't used to having freedom. Standard, standard <laughs> bearer for our in group. The women have in, traditionally given us what our standard should be and like like we've just spoken to we're constantly trying to we're too much worried about what women want in terms of how the relationship should be built and, and and managed and and we entertain a bunch of nonsense and bullshit that no other patriarchal man would because of what y'all are speaking to that it's obvious that i'm equipped to be making these decisions and i'm not going to argue with you we argue though and that's the part of the, what we got to try to un try to unacculturate ourselves to which is we make these like this video we speaking about easier to contend with because it's not even really a discussion it's the man should manage the finances of his family and that includes his wife's income and like we said do it in a safe uh litigious way that you're not you're not putting yourself in any uh, weird scenario. 
you know, with crazy compassionate. I could never understand that dynamic that we've seen in fences. Like, I could never understand how a dude could go to work all day and come home and give a woman his whole check. <laughs> like, to me, that was always so, I was like, why is he doing that? And apparently that was common, because I'm obviously yeah. too young, but that was actually common. But it was a remnant of what some of the PhDs exposed historically, that a lot of men, education was not was not uh, prioritized in our community for black boys. They were meant to work. The thing is, so they would get to a point me. where they couldn't manage basic finances by the time they're a grown man. They can't even write their name, some of them. But what that really showed me to me was how trusting we were yep. as a group of men. Like, we've always been this trusting, fair minded group of men, and it seemed like it has never paid us off. But that's what I was thinking. Too, why, 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 do, why are we like that? that? Why are we like that is, is for a reason. The, only, the reason it, like, we, we seem to be acculturated to, and you, and you describe it as like we're kind of, we're just good hearted men. In a lot of ways, we're docile, well, and we we yeah. al- we entertain shit that no other man would. Man, which I, that's what I was speaking to earlier. It's a remnant of some plantation shit, bro. Yeah, we we shit no, I, I think sometimes shit. go ahead, casual. Go ahead, casual. Sometimes sometimes we we as black men try to spin uh, sh- um, personality shortcomings that we tend to have into um, uh, virtues, and I think in this case, um, allowing yeah. the women to have that kind of control. It's not too. Uh, it's not uh, much unlike um, the way we've interacted with the Chinese in Africa, uh, the way we interact with um, the Caucasian liberals in North America. We just sometimes we lack that um, that um, a desire to be dominant and that resolve to overpower and people. Self preservation. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I just don't see. I don't like. I see now. You know, as we move forward in this, and I'm learning how to manage finances, and I have a real plan. Like yeah. I said, I've never really met a woman with the actual plan. Like, yeah. like I've never met one. You know what I'm saying? Every woman I've met who was on a plan was following some man's plan. Yeah. Whether it was her man or the man she worked for or, you know, her uncle or her dad, it was never her plan. You know, it was never her idea to build the farm or her idea to build the building. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was always somebody else's, and she just kind of gets now, in. Do, do you in. expect most women to have plans? No. That's why I no. can't understand why they feel like they need the money. <laughs> like, what are you going to do with it? Because the, ma- like, the master on the plantation made them in charge of the cabin, and they yeah. got that shit in their fucking jeans. That's so, what that shit but, comes but from. To them, to them, also, money is freedom and control or, you know, to, to do what they want to do when they want to do it, that sort of thing. So it's not so much that, that they have some grand plan or mission with the money. It's just that whether they can wield whatever sort of power at their whim that they choose to wield. Do you think? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all, real, real quick. Side of the mind, if that's you, say it in the chat that that's you. The other person, uh, uh, Raiden, uh, you didn't follow instructions, so you can't get, join the panel. Go back to the go back to the description, follow the instructions, and then I'll decide if I'm gonna let you on or not. Go go ahead, uh, uh Black Rule. That, that was you, right? Yeah, I, I mean they don't. Be just did a great um, a great uh, video a few years back about the sort of the parable of, of women. And they're why they want control or why they seek control. And even when they, even when they get it, it, it usually sort of ends in their in their demise because they're not really constructed to have a mission or a grand plan. Now, certainly some women, maybe because they were trained by you know uh, wiser men, you know I, I I described yesterday how yeah, you're my, wider, my yeah. wife is very pro black especially from a business standpoint was more so than even i was when we first got together because i well i wasn't really raised with my father so in some ways i kind of lacked some direction in in some regard but she had a very very specific and strategic uh view about black business and that came from her father that came from her grandfather she even had that and she compelled me to adopt those standards, you know, that I might not have developed 
had I gotten with a different kind of woman. But so a lot of what I was able to successfully do in life was a product of her father, her grandfather, her uncles, you know, people who I never even met, right? But I met all the, well, I, I met her uncles, but um, her father died long ago. Her, her grandfather died uh, before we met. So um, I never knew them, but in an indirect sort of way, they kind of, because of the great lessons that she learned, and, and the discipline that she brought with them, uh, I was able to adopt that and build from that. So there are some women who do have a broader, you know, view of things and more strategic view of things, but they almost always were invariably uh, guided and directed and trained by men. Yeah, almost always. We, our generation didn't have that. Our women's fucking uncles and shit are crackheads. Mm. Like we gonna just keep it real. Like we 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 are the eighties babies, man. Them mm. people as us uh, maturing into adulthood in the early two thousands, all of their uncles and shit was crackheads. Mm. Like I mean, crack that crack shit did some vicious things to our community, bro. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, all of the damn near, I'm gonna say seventy percent of the older people I knew were crackheads. Like they were drug addicts. Like I'm not gonna lie, like. I didn't know too many older people that wasn't drug addicts. As far as where I grew up at, and it wasn't until I left the area where I grew up at and got to see a different dynamic that I got to be successful. But long as I was in that same environment, most of the we didn't have elders like you and BBS, yep. and we didn't have that. We had a and our women, and our women didn't. They were they, they were, were, they they were up yeah, under. Hey, guys, guys, guys! I I got silent up here. I got I got to let silent get in. Got to let silent get in. Hey, what's good, peoples? What's going on, brother? Hey, so, hey, hey I just just came to deliver a late Christmas present, early New Year's gift for my brothers. You know, there's a saying that in a world full of insane people, sane people look crazy. And I do not want my black brothers to think that your humanity is a negative. You are dealing with people who have been a virus on this earth since its beginning. And they and they telling you that, that, that you ain't shit. And so you think that black men are the most uh, humble, human, empathetic beings who have ever existed, despite all the shit that you've been through. And that shit is not a negative. That shit of the gods. So don't ever let anybody convince you that those character traits are negative things. Don't worry about what these wicked fucking people are doing. This is the same reason that you still exist in the universe where these motherfuckers are, have extended a hand with a knife behind their back. You still on this fucking world competing and everybody sees that shit. Everybody sees the God in you. That's the shit me and Black Moon was talking about in the chat. When you walk in the room, motherfuckers see you. That shit is natural. You don't need the media to send out their propaganda all over the world to prop you up as the man. You're the man in every fucking room you step in. And that's why they fucking fear you. Now, I keep telling y'all, there's a lot of fucking systems and people that stand to lose a lot of shit by you keeping your eyes closed. And the moment you black men wake up and realize the autonomy and they fucking power, everybody fucking loses because we take over all this shit, including your fucking women who were sent here as fucking uh, plants to destroy you. So, man, don't fucking hold your head fucking low. You know, every fucking five minutes, I see a black man saving a kitten out of a tree or saving the LED fucking lady, or, you know, saving black man was saved 12 motherfuckers from burning cars. Facts. All right. <laughs> Your fucking heart is fucking has the capacity for love. That shit is the, sh the math and love is the shit that exists in all over the universe, man. So but, don't but ever let anybody tell you, man, that that shit is a negative thing, man. My, my, my point wasn't uh, about um, <clears throat> black men losing their... um. Uh, characteristic uh, goodness, for lack of a uh, better word. Uh, my point was more about um, uh, black men being aware of um, the fact that they need to balance um, their um, um, their goodness against yeah. uh, their own uh, uh, personal uh, welfare. Because sometimes we 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 just don't understand the way other people see us, and we don't understand necessarily that we should also seek to dominate others 
or else we're going to be harmed. But I think, but I think what Simon is trying to say, but what I think Simon is trying to say is, is, and I always say this too, and they always say this about black men: black men need to do more. No, you don't. We already are doing it. I don't know. No people came out of this shit like we went through, and then came through Jim Crow like we went through. And I know G and a lot of guys talk about the crack era, but I always like to let guys remember: if the crack ever never happened, your woman still was going to do you the exact same way she's doing you today. Uh, no, most definitely, most definitely. So, so at the end of the day, I don't even. That's, that's why. I, that's why I never you I never bring up the crack era, none of that mess. Because there wasn't no crack era in the 70s when LBJ enacted them laws and y'all and them policies and your ass wanted to buy by kicking your man out the house. Well, no crack era then. Get the fuck out of here. I know plenty of uh, the last ride or die women was um they in this country was them Native American women. That's why there's only less than three percent of them with the population. They ride or die with their man. B dubs ain't no ride or die chick. And I'm with silent. I see black men always be giving out a helping hand. Period. Yeah, we, used to run, of, we ran this world that way. And that it kind of, to, that kind of it, has listen, often been taken it, as a weakness. That's it. If you look back at our history, when we used to be running this world and all the Christopher Columbus came here first, fuck that bullshit. Mm -hmm. We used to be all over this planet. We never lied. We helped and share with everybody. It wasn't until they showed up that Native Americans was like, oh, they fucking stealing from us. Oh, they lying to us. That's how they operate. That ain't us, man. I, I'm, I'm, with, I'm, with, I'm, with, I'm with casual observer. You can't be no fool. You better be observant of the environment you're in. But outside oh, of that, I'm a silent, man. We're, we're two good people, man. That's what we're Anyone going. that knows me knows I'm not a pacifist. I bring a, a missile launcher to a gunfight. So <laughs> I know what, he's, uh, what he means that uh, you, don't, you don't bring that ether when it's brought to you. I'm just saying that that goodness and all of that ooey gooey shit that black men got, that, that's just the shit of the gods, man. And I, I think that's actually, you know, the shit that keeps our good karma alive. I think if we were a bunch of evil motherfuckers, maybe we would have been exterminated. No, that's that's <laughs> all I'm saying too, Silent. Like this is gonna be my closing statement, Raj. Um, I, I'm glad you know, to see you say to, that because we at the three hour mark. But go ahead. <laughs> I listen to the brothers and I agree with the brothers with everything they are saying and I just, I'm at the point where it's not even about the women for me no more because we've already solved that issue. We could discuss it. We already know, man. We've been talking about this stuff. So now that we know, you know, we know how to move and we can just keep coaching the young brothers and telling them our experiences. But I want to be starting a channel next year. I finally going to pull the trigger and start making content. And my channel is going to be all about black male fraternity and working together in our old history about our old fraternal groups that we used to have and everything we used to do together about, you know, the black musketeers. People don't know about a lot of this stuff. I've been reading a lot of these books lately, but with that being said, bro, you know, as Officer Charles would be saying, we are protectors, you know, we are saviors. And with that being said, peace to the gods, man. I love the bros. I'll talk to y'all later. I appreciate you, G. Appreciate you, G. And, and you know what? I do want to start to wrap it up because we are at the three hour mark. I want so, to, I'll wrap it up, bro. That's my last comment statement. I'm with Silent on this. And then I'm going to add it just uh, what, what G has added on. If it weren't for black men in this country, they wouldn't even have goddamn 90% of the fucking inventions that they got. Y'all better go check your history and what the people you are. What we do, all them inventions stolen from us. Them ideas. Nigga can't even read crazy shit. Niggas can't even read operating tanks. I'm with silent on this one. You better wake up and recognize what you are, man. Period. The advancements of this country ain't come out of no, no aliens. It ain't come out of none of them other people. It came out of us, man. It and came out of reconstru the reconstruction period. Period. That's us. Uh, couldn't even read. Can't even read. Shoot. Yeah, but they had a black dude. I can't remember his name right now. Help, help with a uh, navy, uh, navy engine ships. Couldn't even read and write. Never and forget that there people. were yeah. over more than two hundred and fifty Black Wall Streets. Never forget. Never forget. They know what the fuck we are. They know specifically what we are. 
if we are left to our own devices and we just not fucked with because we don't fuck with nobody else. We are the meat of the earth. You better recognize that, man. All right. Now, um, well, uh, we well, you know what? I'm going to give it to Black Guru next, but I'm going to just say, y'all, keep, keep in mind, the one of the main reasons folks ain't following instructions because we ain't been giving it to them. We, we do have to accept the responsibility that we have not told women what they're supposed to do. So this whole thing about turn your check over, uh, what you know, going outside of my own family, I ain't really heard nobody say this stuff. You know what I'm saying? It should be common sense, but it ain't. So we have to instruct people on what to do. And if we're not going to instruct them, you know, you can't hold them accountable for knowing if we never actually told them. You know what I'm saying? Now I do talk about holding people accountable, and we should, but we got to tell them too. We can't just say, you know, do what I think. Cause that that's when I one one thing I've been saying to women for a long time. Don't come at me with what you think. Come at me with what you told me. If you never told it to me, don't expect it out of me. Period. You know what I'm saying? Cause women love for me in the read their mind, and I'm not gonna volunteer to do it. Just that simple. Uh, but go ahead, Black or Rule. Then I get being casual. We get up. Oh, uh, thanks again for having me up, Roger. It's always a great discussion. You know, I, I was a. Uh, I mean, this is gonna be off topic, but it, it made me think about um, about something. Uh, G mentioned the Three Musketeers, um, the sort of legendary story about the, the, uh, the French noblemen, the three French noblemen, and then there was actually a younger one added to the group of uh, the famed D'Artagnan. It's a great story. That That's, that's a story that those of us of a certain age of have all grown up, grown up on the, the phrase the three musketeers has been used in myriad different media, uh, uh, even in sort of common parlance or reference. You know, three musketeers were was written by the great Alexander Dumas, Frenchman. Uh, Alexander Dumas was the son of Thomas Dumas. Thomas Dumas was probably the greatest general in Napoleon's uh, army. He was so feared that he had a particular type of name that they referred to him as. They referred to him as the Black Demon. Thomas Alexander Dumas was born a slave. His son, Alexander, wrote the legendary The Three Musketeers. Have you all ever heard tale of the fact that The Three Musketeers was written by a black man? Whose father yep, I did. Yep. was the I greatest did. general in Napoleon's war? I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, I knew. She, damn right I knew. Yeah. But you notice well, you never hear you talk about that information that. out. I'm sure. I'm sure it wasn't just. You never hear talk about that. You also never hear talk about the the another great legend, American legend, Americana, the Lone Ranger. Yep. Tell them, Black Uru. Tell them. <laughs> the Lone. That was a black man. Buffalo soldier. You know. I, I mean. There's so much about black men that is so wondrous uh that goes unspoken you know the the real um the real uh uh lone rangers bass reeves legendary lawman in the west i mean basically helped to settle the west now of course you can debate the whole issue involving native americans maybe that's another issue can be talked about but but uh, again another uh Another thing that Silent Lamont touched on, this sort of greatness of black men, very often underplayed, very often understated, the great generosity by which uh, black men have gifted the world. Again, I know this is off topic from what you described, uh, from, from what you presented here, Roger, but I, I just felt compelled to kind of end this discussion uh, my part of this discussion on that note, the great and unique contribution and generosity of 
of black men. It seems kind of ironic that there would be any debate at all about whether or not we should lead in any sort of resource allocation for our families. And yet, sadly, uh, there is a question about that. So I'll end my closing statement there. All right, well, appreciate you, brother. Really appreciate you. Uh, casual observer, it's on you, brother. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Roger. Um, I wanted to speak to uh, the point I was making earlier. Um, my closing remark is, um, yes, we as black men, we're, we're, we've been uh, great people. We've always been the, the, the most moral people on the planet. But if we want to enter uh, the next phase of our existence uh, with power, um, not citing things we've done and others have gotten the, the profit or gotten the power from our actions, um, we will have to change our perspective on how we approach things. Uh, being kind to a fault isn't necessarily a good thing. All virtue must be balanced between extremes. And in many, and in, in, in our case, we haven't done the best job. Uh, sometimes it uh, balancing between the two. And um, I wanted to to, uh, to say that um, going into the new year, um, black men, it's very important that you start um, start um, um, start um, um, maybe donating a little bit more to the black content creators in the space. Um, it takes a lot of effort to put together uh, these shows, and these shows do have a lot of value. A lot of us have learned a lot uh, from uh, these shows over the course of the year. So I think as part of our uh, improvement towards being a more prosperous and powerful group is starting to put our money and our power behind people that advocate for us. So um, really look back on uh, um, what you've done in order to support the things that are happening on the, uh, I hate to compare, but on the black women's side where they're, um, ideally, we want to be moving more in that direction. If you want the space to grow, you really have to put your your money behind the content creators uh, for uh, putting together these uh, these great shows, especially during the pandemic. Thank you. Appreciate that, Cash. Appreciate it. Um, I just want to say that uh, look at at the end of the day, uh, you you either going to have to accept that it's okay for someone that you're involved with in an intimate way to look at you as an abuser or not, okay? Uh, Rael, it should have been done already. Let me, I'm gonna double check, I, I just seen your last comment. It, it, that should have been done, but let me try to do it again, okay? Um, yeah, you, you have to make a decision on, are you, um, are you okay with with your women looking at you as some type form of abuser? Because it because that's what's really going on. If your woman doesn't want to turn her money over to you, she doesn't trust you to do right. She looks at you as a an abuser, and she wants to make sure you can't take advantage of her. Does it make sense to be in a relationship with a woman in that closer setting where she wants to live with you? You know, and I'm saying live because I know everybody ain't gonna get married. Even though I don't recommend you live with a woman unless you get married. If you don't trust her that much, you shouldn't live with her. But if she wants to live with you and benefit off the fact that you earn money and you're going to be putting into this relationship, if she don't trust you enough to actually be led by you, what good does that do you? I know a lot of men have been taught to worry about what the women want no matter what. Okay, I'm not saying you cannot have concern for your woman. But at the end of the day, again, what good does it do you to make sure your woman is okay and she don't even trust you enough for you to lead the relationship? How do you have a good relationship if she don't have that much trust for you? You don't really got business dating women that don't trust you like that. If you take her seriously, why is this even a question? Okay? And and I know a lot of this comes from that 50-50 um, thinking. I don't care nothing about no 50-50 talk because I ain't seen nobody do 50-50. So she's not going to do 50-50. She's going to act like she, she wanted to do 50-50. And she, then she's going to not do 50-50. And then y'all mess around and get a legal marriage in, in, in the United States. And then, you know, you get divorced. She won't have anyway. If she if she won't have, you know what I'm saying? she's going to ask for half, what's the problem with her putting in? 
you know, let her take some of her own stuff back. Let her be just as invested as you. Men have a problem with what they're going to lose. You're going to lose a lot less if she have to put it in the same way you do. So why not, why, why not just decide to lose less? If she's going to work outside the home, she needs to be putting in. If she can't put in, that's absolutely fine. Respect her enough to let her find a new man. It's that simple at the end of the day. You can't live with me unless you're going to turn the check over. Now, Black Guru made some suggestions about uh, writing up a contract. I don't, I don't think that's a horrible suggestion at all. You know, and if she leaves, you also can, can well, you know, we, we'll talk a little bit more about this Monday, probably not with, the, with what I'm thinking. But if she can't agree to, to, to the, if she can't agree that you're her leader, why would you try to lead her? I, I don't get the point in that. Okay. There, there is no reason to try to lead a woman who cannot agree that you should lead her. And she's not agreeing based on her action. I don't care what she's saying. If she ain't going to turn the money over, if she's not going to accept the budget that you give her. And let's just say it's 100 a month, like the young lady said. Well, that should be enough. And if that's not enough, she needs to get with a man that can give her more. That's simple. Get out of her way and let her find the man that's going to give her more. Maybe she needs 200 a week. Maybe she needs 1,000 a week. Maybe she needs 50000 a week. That ain't enough for me to worry about. Get out of her way and let her find a man willing to give it to her. Okay? But don't waste money on a woman who can't accept what you have to offer. That's the waste of your time at the end of the day. And for women, if you can't accept what he has to offer, you're basically trying to steal from him anyway. You're trying to steal his future. You want him to waste money on you. You don't respect him. And you're going to do this until you feel that you can meet another guy who you can take from him and be in a better situation. So you basically a low down, dirty dog anyway. So nobody should be worried about you. It just is what it is. All right. So let's keep it moving. Let's do what's good for us as individuals, which makes it if you do what's good for you as an individual, you can do what's good for you as a couple. If you can do what's good for you as a couple, then you can do what's good for you as a family. If you do what's good for you as a family, then we can do what's good for the neighborhood. And once we do what's good for the neighborhood, then we can actually do what's good for the community. But it, it's going to start with self at the end of the day. So women, if you can't be satisfied with an allowance of a particular man, go find a man whose allowance you can be satisfied with. And if you don't want to take an allowance because you feel that you're a woman, you can make your own decision, you can live how you want. Nothing wrong with that. Just go get you a job, work, provide for yourself, or go start you a business and provide for yourself. And that and that'll be that. OK, just that simple. Be alone and just work for it. If we do that, everybody go in. OK, that's how we all win. A woman that cannot be under man's leadership needs to be able to pay for her own life. And, and if men can avoid the women who, who need to be under their own leadership, the men will get with the women who want to be under man's leadership. Then guess what? Everybody wins. The man win, wins who wanted the woman who wanted to be under man's leadership. The woman who is looking for a man. Leadership, to be honest, she got what she wants. She good. The woman who can't accept the black man's leadership, she get to go work and provide for herself. So technically, she won too. Now, I know y'all might say, well, look how they doing when they sing. She still won because she got what she wanted. It's on her to want something else. That's simple, y'all. So uh, shout out to Casual Observer for this. He said to the chat, look for your favorite black manosphere content creator, cash apps, PayPals, and super chats, and make advocating for black men worthwhile. The money will be reinvested to advancing us. Hey, thank you very much for saying that, Casual Observer. That's a very, very good point. And it, it definitely will because we do need an, um, the financial freedom to do more for Black people as a whole. We do need it. You know, as long as we have to deal in other things to earn money to live off of, you know, there's only so much we can do at the end of the day. Now, me, I'm going to do the best I can with what I got. I appreciate everybody who, who does financially support the channel. I appreciate all y'all. I appreciate everybody who comes in and, and puts in their two cents, whether they agree or disagree. It, it don't bother me none. And I appreciate everybody who listens, whether you listening live or you on team replay. But please make sure y'all hit the like button. Let's make sure this channel grow. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you're subscribed. Uh, this was formerly the Rise Report 3, but this is the main channel now. So make sure you're subscribed. And shout out to Black Warrior Spirit, who is a sponsor of this particular stream today. Appreciate you very much. Love y'all. 
I will see y'all next week. Long live the habitual line steppers. I'm Roger. I'm right. And I'm out.